Spectrum. This is Spectrum on Radio 1, and uh, I'm Edmond Chizito, your host. Tonight on Spectrum, in whose interest is the proposal to amend the Constitution to extend the term of elective office from five to seven years. A proposal has been fronted by a member of parliament to have the Constitution amended so all elected leaders in Uganda serve a term of seven years instead of five at present. In defense of this proposal, the MP claims it is a v it's very difficult for uh, any government to fulfill its mandate or even its manifesto within the current five years. He says two years are always wasted in political campaigns and other procedural matters. This suggestion has been treated with a lot of disdain, with many political analysts and actors likening it to the controversial constitutional amendment of 2005, which led to the scrapping of the two-term presidential limits. The MP, who has uh, made the proposal, argues that under this arrangement, a trade-off that will see the two-term limits being restored will be included in the proposed amendment. This MP, who was one of the architects of the lifting of the two-term presidential limits, has insisted that this is his own view and not that of the ruling NRM party. However, the opposition says the MP has already launched an underground campaign to push forward an NRM agenda which is likely to involve tabling an omnibus bill that will see other key entrenched articles on governance, including the age limit for the presidency, being scrapped to give the current president another lifeline in 2016. Africa still suffers from the big man syndrome, where those in power for long overlook the constitution, focusing on how they can retain office against all odds. Proponents of democracy argue that having a limited time in office entrenched is the only way to stop this trend. So tonight we ask, in whose interest is the proposal to have the term for elective office extended from five to seven years? Two, we also ask what benchmarks can one use to say that government programs cannot be successfully implemented within the current five-year term. We also ask whether this matter should be tabled in Parliament at all, or rather the proposal should be ignored and shelved altogether. Our guests tonight, Honorable James Kakosa, State Minister for Primary Health Care, the main protagonist for this uh, discussion. You're most welcome, Honorable Kakosa. Thank you very much to dear listeners. Uh, we also have Mr. Asman Basaliru, President of the Justice Forum Party, also known as Jema. You're most welcome, Mr. Basaliru. Thank you very much and good evening to all our uh, listeners. Honorable Kakosa, you claim that this proposal, the proposal you are making, is based on your own research and ideas. How and when did you start uh, contemplating this proposal? Uh, thank you very much mm, to Mr. Reta. I would like to inform the public that uh, in politi politics arena, you must have an, invent an independent thinker for the benefit of the public, because any leader who is credible must show a political direction, a political lead. He tables it to public opinion, they discuss it, they generate consensus, if it has a meaning. If it doesn't, it's not a crime. But what I think to the public, most of the times, some of us, our observations and analysis, like me, they always go theoretical, not practical. And I want to tell the listeners that me, in my own analysis, as I'm going to elaborate, 2016, the country will be at a different angle. It will be stable politically. The economic growth will be at a two-digit figure. The social infrastructure, infrastructure transformation will be different. The technologies will be different. So we need to compare the struggle of democracy in 21st century and the developmental democracy in African states. <clears throat> As we talk of now, uh, people must know that there is, which is coming in within the region. By 2013, we shall have a chairman of the presidents, the six states of the East African region. And by 2019, we shall get one president who will be reading all these states, those are about like seven 
to nine states. But what could be the main agenda? The main agenda could be developmental democracy, whereby people can benefit to that good governance of the infrastructure. Why am I saying so? The trend has changed in politics. Take it, leave it. Any country which stabilizes, it controls the economy. It has also infrastructure. It needs sustainability. And it needs good governance, whereby the public service delivery, where people they expect some good services, must be continued and must be to the benefit of the people within that country. When you look at the last elections, you find that now the voting is changing, the voting pattern of the people. We are in competitive politics. People look at the manifesto, what are you offering, what is good for them, and they choose you. In a multi-party system setting, I do urge you that when you look at the situation analysis, practically, you remember we started the campaign in the last year. That almost in May, those who were getting into interested in, 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 in elective offices, that was May. At least in my party, <coughs> the national conference, we changed the constitution of NRM to have elective offices from grassroots. We started a national delegate in June, and we had a national delegate conference in August. We had primary 30th August. We went into solving problems. It clocked up to November. November we had started campaign 16th November of electoral democracy. And now the voting was 18th February. The sworn-in of a new government will be just around May. The year is gone totally. One year is totally gone. It's totally gone. <clears throat> yes. But look at the cost benefits. How much have we invested? How much have we spent there? And the public service delivery, how much are the people benefited from it? You carry it down and say, that year is gone. The man who is watching the decision making, these are the politicians who are in the elective offices, is the performance of service delivery correct right now? You look at cutting across all the ministries. It's down. Because the decision maker, the person who would be making an oversight function, is in campaigns. All of us, from grassroots, yes. from ROC1. Yes, we've seen evidence of that, I think. From ROC1 yes. up to the president. Right. What is happening now? Time wasted. Service delivery suffers for that period, yes? Service delivery delivers. Yes. You look at when the government is going to be sworn in. Suppose another party comes in. It's not NRM. It's not uh, UPC. It's not DP. But any party which comes in right. with its own ideological concept, which has its own agenda, it will go back to zero and start implementing its own manifesto where it will have a challenge of human resource, like in African states, you know, whereby it will also clock up another year to stabilize. Those are two years. If you have five, you are remaining with three. Look, you've promised people within five years, you are saying, you choose me to be in power. I'm going to put up a road of 200 kilometers. <coughs> You are going to put up infrastructure very far off hospital, which is not there. You are securing a loan. Most of the African states, they are depending on, on, on World Bank, on IMF. It takes another year. Are you going to implement the manifest within those five, three years which are remaining? What happens? Well, I mean, on paper, when you explain it, it looks really, really plausible. And I'm saying on paper, I emphasize. But let's look at the politics of it. In whose interest is this proposal? We'll come back to the technical side later. Yeah. But people are going to ask, in whose interest is this proposal you're making? Of course, people could have said, as I've heard it, I clearly put it across and I 
clearly air it out. It's not an interest of any party, but it's an interest of the demo developmental democracy, which is within Africa, which must be stabilized. And I'm not saying, because most of the people I've heard that they are saying we want to extend this term of office of 2011-2016. No, I'm talking of 2016. Yes. 2021. Because this one is, is finished. I'm giving homework to MPs, all elective officers who are coming in. Yes. To start thinking. Beyond 2016. Beyond 2016. Right. Because it cannot be possible that you can extend the term of office now. Because these people who are going to do it, they have a conflict of interest. That would be retrospective. That will be retrospective. Mm -hmm. Let's have so another. It will, it will be 2016. After that, think of 10 states where we'll be having a trunk road which will be crossing from Entebbe or from Kampala to DRC. Yes. And that's your manifesto as a president within that region, within three years, procuring a road to DRC.